Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So we're in our Harriet today and we're looking at countermeasures. Now we're still in the uh, early release of the Harriet and a lot of stuff isn't programmed yet but we've been putting this video off forever and people keep asking questions so let's just go over very simply the, the stuff that's in at the moment and just go over the basics. So we're going to be working with this right MFD here and these knobs here. The things we're looking at today are the RWR radar warning receiver, chaff and flare and ECM jamming. So first of all a little bit of theory. Chaff and flare first. Uh, these are countermeasures expended from units that are in the plane. They don't need expendable pods or anything. Flares, as you probably know, are for falling um, hostile infrared seeking missiles. And chaff are little strips of metal that fall radars and radar guided missiles. As well as that, we've got an ECM, otherwise known as a jammer or a jamming pod. Now you have to equip this on your center pylon. It's known as a DECM, I believe. The ECM works by intercepting um, radiation signals that are coming from hostile radars and um, some of that signal will bounce off our aircraft back to the um, hostile radar receiver. From that it can process information and work out exactly where we are, our altitude, our heading, our range, everything it needs to fire a missile at us. So the ECM uh, works by receiving that um, initial radiation from the hostile transmitter and then sending a load of false signals back along with the original radar reflection um, and white noise basically to fool the hostile radar. Now this works best at long distance where it's harder for the hostile receiver to, ter to determine which is the original reflection signal and which is our jamming noise. Uh, the closer we get to the hostile radar, the easier it can pick out the, the original information and overcome our ECM jamming. Uh, that point is called the burn through point when it can burn through our ECM jamming and again find all of our critical information and the, has the ability to fire at us again. And then the RWR radar warning receiver. So if we go outside here, uh, this is a series of passive sensors on the uh, peripheries of the aircraft, the edges of the wings, the tail and the nose, I believe. And they, the passive only, so they listen in uh, basically a 360 degree overlapping cone um, sidewards, forwards and backwards. Now note at this point that they don't listen above and they don't listen below. So those are black spots um, at which point um, we can't listen to any radar. So they listen to friendly and hostile radars. They can't distinguish between friendly and hostile because they are passive only they don't handshake and then they present that information those radar signals are in a graphical item called known as the RWR or electronic warfare page for our consideration and it gives us information like the direction of the, um, the radar that is detecting the rough range what type of radar it is ground-based sea-based air-based whether it's um, scanning us or sorry whether it's searching or whether it's locking onto us or whether it's firing a missile at us so it gives us a complete situational awareness of hostile radar threats around us so let's get cooking first of all let's get the ew page going so what we're going to do is unpause rwr is controlled here we're going to scroll that right and turn it on so it's in the on position or above to the volume ew page here from the main menu is going to give us our rwr display let's pause it again so before we go over this um, electronic warfare page here, let's just quickly look our, at our expendables and ECM again. So our ECM jammer pod, as long as we've got our jammer pod equipped, we've got options. We can go off to turn it off. Standby when it just keeps it warmed and ready to go. Bit building test. You're probably used to that now with the Hornets emergence. Uh, you've got the receive here. Uh, that basically means it stays quiet. Uh, it doesn't transmit anything until it receives um, um, uh, what it believes are hostile radar transmissions and then it becomes active and then it does start transmitting and then we've got the last command at the end there i can't quite see it there uh, i think that says rpt repeat uh, that basically just means it transmits all the time um, i don't know why you would ever want to use that rather than receive but uh, that's a thing there uh, expendables chaff and flare uh, now as far as i'm aware um, so you can fire them basically as single chaff and flares with click of uh, your button in fact why don't we show you that first adjust controls We've got um, forward here for flares and aft there for chaff. So you can literally click the button, those, those uh, controls and a one times chaff or one times flare will come up. So that's the manual control. Um, we have here other control. We have off here to turn the system off. Uh, you will still be able to fire them manually, but this is here essentially like um, an automatic control, a program control. Automatic, 
uh, where it automatically selects a, a program based on the threats that it sees, so chaff, flare, whatever. Uh, we've got an option here for up and down, uh, deciding whether it uses the upper mounted uh, expendables first or the lower mounted expendables first on the aircraft. And if we can see it, RWR at the bottom right there, uh, where the RWR here will control which um, uh, program of chaff and flares it fires. As far as I'm aware, this uh, automatic control doesn't work at the moment. Uh, we've just got the basic manual controls as I showed earlier and that's fine at the moment to be honest. So that moves us on to the actual RWR page. Uh, this is something you'll want up all the time. Well I say that as, but in fact um, being a modern plane as well as having the RWR page here it also displays it on the HUD. You don't have to do anything to get it to display on the HUD. It does it automatically as far as I'm aware. Uh, so we'll be looking at both basically. I like to have both. This is very useful uh, having it like this. So let's talk about threat. Uh, threat rating. In a basic NATO RWR terms, um, if you look at an RWR and an F-15 or a F-5, essentially you've got threats around here, the, the direction, oh, there's us in the middle, so the direction is based um, on the you know 1 to 12 o'clock position, so these guys here are at about the 12 o'clock position, this threat here is at the 10 o'clock position and so on. Um, generally speaking in NATO um, RWRs, the closer they are to you, uh, us being here, the uh, stronger the radar signal and therefore the closer geographically they are to us. And that applies uh, slightly to this as well. Uh, we've got, because it's modern uh, system, we get threat rings. Uh, so we've got the outer threat ring here, which just means that they are uh, using a search radar only. They're not tracking you or locking you. And the signal is weak, so they're at a high distance. Now, we don't know what that distance is. The reason is because all different threats have different strength of radar signals. So this MiG-29 here will have a different radar strength signal to this AE, so we can't really determine its distance in miles. The next ring in is search mode again, so they're only searching, but the signal is stronger. Uh, so if that MiG-29 there got closer to us in this ring here, then we would know that he's closer and he's becoming more of a threat. So these are threat-based rings. Uh, then we get the um, the lethal ring, at which point um, the hostile um, or... Uh, oh, one thing I should say at this point, this does not distinguish between friend or foe. So these MiG-29s and this um, ship here, um, you can't tell if they're friends or foe. That's just something, because it's a passive system, again, it's a handshake, it's something you have to get used to. Lethal ring in the middle here. So once a hostile is locking you, so they're no longer searching, but they're locking, they're going to move into this uh, lethal ring here, at which point they become a lethal threat. And also if they fire a missile at you, that will be in this lethal ring in the middle here. Um, at this point, I'll quickly point out that we do have commands around here, um, buttons to, to press to change things in the RWR system. As far as I'm aware, none of them are actually functional at the moment. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I couldn't get any function from them. Um, we've got a uh, chaff and flare counter there. Okay, uh, so now let's have a quick look at the HUD. The HUD displays the same information. It also displays the threat rings, but displays them in a different way. So you've got the two MiG-29s in the kind of 11 and 1 o'clock position, and the A, the boat there at the 10 o'clock position. Um, the threat ring is shown um, in this uh, tick marker here. So this tick marker is coming to us there, that one there, that one there. So they show the azimuth, basically. So you know, like we said, that's uh, 1 o'clock, that's, that's 11 o'clock. And this uh, threat marker here will change depending on which threat ring they're in there. That's all I can think for, to say for that for the moment. So we're just going to start flying in and uh, we're going to talk through the different sounds and symbology as we go on. Stuff that we can talk about at the moment. AE, AE is a boat and we can tell it's a boat. It's got the boat symbol underneath, this uh, kind of tray symbol underneath. These, these 29s are MiG-29s. We know that they are airborne targets because they have the chevron above them saying that they're airborne targets. For a full list of the symbols of what all of these mean, uh, I couldn't find them in the manual that we have at the moment, but someone I'm sure will have chronicled them Googled so you can go through them all there. Okay, so let's unpause and start going. Okay, we have a change. Um, that happened rather quickly, so let's just explain the things that have changed in the last few miles. First of all, the ship here has moved from the 10 o'clock position to the 9 o'clock position, or very nearly. That's because we're passing it, and it's moving from right to left like that, essentially. Uh, the MiG-29s have moved slightly. Also, I've done a little experiment here. That one is hostile. That one is friendly. 
Um, and I just did that to prove that you can't tell the difference between a hostile or a friendly. Uh, we had, we've got a new player, a 6, that's an SA-6 ground SAM launcher, or ground SAM radar I should say. Uh, the first thing to say about the SA-6, when it appeared it had a dome shape um, symbology above it. That stayed there about a second or two seconds, I'm not exactly sure. That just means that it's a new player, it's something that's just appeared on the RWR, so whether we've got in its detection range, or maybe we've got, it's turned its radar on when it uh, decided... Um, that we were at a lockable range. The next thing is it's flashing and it's within the lethal circle. So that means it's no longer searching for us. It's actually got a track on us. So it's got us locked. It hasn't fired a missile yet. And we can see that this lethal marker here, it's up here on the 10 o'clock position and the lethal marker now is longer and it's got a chevron at the bottom saying that it's in the lethal uh, circle and it's got a lock on us. So let's continue and just see what happens. And it's disappeared there, so for whatever reason, it's taken its lock off of us. Um, don't know, your guess is as good as mine. But importantly, it's in this ring here. So what it's saying is that um, it's no longer locking us. It's only searching for us, but it's much closer. The signal is much stronger than the 29s or the boat, which probably means it is much closer to us. It's probably mm, 10 to 20 miles, where these are probably 40 or 50 miles. Okay, so let's carry on and see what happens next. You heard that sound there. I'm not going to just try and describe that sound. It sounded a bit like a bird to me. But that means it's one of the um, uh, radars has disappeared. Maybe it's crashed. Maybe it's turned around. It's not painting us anymore. But that MiG-29 is no longer searching for us. Exactly the same thing. It's uh, a new signal. Got the same sound there. You can see it's got the dome above it. Um, because it's a new, it's just come back on the radar as a new radio source that will disappear shortly, and he's he probably just turned his radar on and off or something. And uh, we've got this chap here. Um, he is within the lethal circle now, but that's only due to range. Uh, the signal strength is extremely strong now. He's not actually got a lock on us. When he's got a lock on us, we'll get the beeping and we'll get the chevron there. So it's just telling us he's super dangerous range now. In fact, why don't we just um, confirm all of this? Um, we've got our map here we can use cheat, and yeah, we can see that the SA6 there is now only 14 miles, while the flankers are over 30 miles, and the ship is basically 30 miles. So it's all uh, working out so far. And I'm just going to head towards the SA6 a bit more just to ensure that he does shoot at us, get within his range. Okay, he's got a lock on us again. He's flashing, it's beeping, and we've got the chevron and the elongated uh, lethal line. I expect he'll take a pop at us soon. Start to head down. And he's fired. So obviously the beeping has increased, the flashing has increased, and although we've actually just disappeared off here, I think it's in the middle of flashing, that's why let's try that again. Yep, I'm trying to catch it. Uh, basically what I'm trying to say is that it's flashing on here so it's got the elon elongated threat marker and the chevron but it's flashing so he's fired a missile at us um, and we can also see that this MiG-29 here is, got, is getting within a lethal range he's not locking us yet but you can see we've got the elongated um, uh, lethal line there so uh, let's just see if we can see this missile out of interest okay we can't see it but we can see on map it does exist uh, so that's uh, so uh, we're going to use this information we know this guy's our 11 o'clock he's fired a missile at us so we're going to evade which will hopefully i'm going to try and show off the black spot the the um in the radar as, in the rwr as well what i'll do i'm going to do is i'm going to turn away from it turn my belly to that um missile and you should see the signal disappear let me just try that now and there you see that we've turned our belly to the missile which is how we're going to evade um, i'm not going to show you proper evasion yet i'm going to do a whole video series on that soon but the important thing is that the signal has disappeared now that doesn't mean the missile has been beaten or it's disappeared it means it's in our black spot and it's something to be aware of because that's fooled me and my guys so many times now uh, once we've completely turned away and gone level wings level again or more or less you'll see that the uh, we'll get back in our radar detection and we've got a mig-29 locking us now level out there and you can see you can see we're getting the um, SA-6 missile back at our, because it's in our radar detection. And in fact, there it is, it's about to smack us in the face. And as well as that, a MiG-29 um, is also shooting at us. It's, I think, 
I think it's going to be flashing, is it? No, it's just locking us. Let's see if we can beat this missile so we can end the tutorial style. Chaff out as we spoke before. Get off me, you mother. Ah, oh, we're hit and we're down. Punch it out. Okay, so the evasion didn't go very well, but I hope um, we've I've shown everything I need to show, for all the stuff that's working at the moment. Uh, go and use it, go and dodge some missiles, have fun, I hope that helps, and I'll see you later.